So today I thought I will share with you how I create these um, color wheels. So let's start with the um, tool that you need. There's a very easy and simple way, which is this little tool. And uh, it's a metal compass. And basically what it is, is it's one of those things we used to use in school. Um, one has a needle, so, and they kind of, some of them are a bit more basic. Some of them have a bit more movement. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, why you would need to bend things and stuff but um, anywho you can secure them to be to not have that sort of movement and stay in place so that's that and then on the other side on the other end you have a little lead fixed into place here so the needle here and the lead here so what you need to do is just literally draw a circle. So let's say I'm going to start on this um, side and what you need to make sure is find the center of the page and see what I, actually your circle will fit in because if you wanted a circle that big and you think, oh, I'm going to purse it here and just start drawing, it's not going to make it, is it? So make sure, <laughs> I'm sure it's... Um, easy enough and I shouldn't explain this but just in case so make sure you purse it in the middle of the page which is probably around here for me and then I'm going to bring in the pencil bit to about here and then I'm going to draw a circle like so you can do it in one go. I tend to kind of do a few lines. Now, before you do anything else at this point, lift your compass and then um, take it as it is without moving anything and kind of roughly at the top, put your needle and your pencil and just move it where the pencil bit is. And make a little mark and you continue this six times and I didn't realize but that will make the perfect section for the color wheel so just continue that there you go and last one so now, what you're going to do is find that hole again and think about how many um, circles you want within. Do you want, for instance, to make one kind of like a normal swatch of the watercolor? Then you maybe want to, I don't know, add um, some like white to it or maybe you want to add some black to it so depending on how many layers of that color you want to have in that circle you then can create say three circles within here I'm just going to do one well actually yeah no I'm gonna do one so I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to just move the pencil to roughly where I want it to be, like that, and just do another circle inside here, like that. There you go. So that's very, very simple. Now you need a ruler, and I recently found my ruler. There we go. I was looking for it for a while. And you need a pencil. And what you're going to do is connect those lines. So you're going to connect this line and this line to create a cross and then one across the cross if that makes sense and um, ideally they should go through the hole where the needle was placed so that's the center of things and that is it that's how simple it is you don't need to count anything you don't need to be you know like thinking too much about it. It's a very simple process and it makes a very neat looking little color wheel. 
So there you go. I'm sure those of you who have all the kits, you can just borrow that type of compass from, from your kid's school kit or something. Um, and you don't even need to like go and buy it. Okay, so this is our circle. And um, then I probably should show you um, a very, very basic way of how to mix colors. Now, traditionally you put a yellow, a red and a blue. So let's write that down. So yellow, red and blue. The reason is that, um, so these are your primary colors and you can mix any color in between, which would be your secondary and tertiary, tertiary colors. I can never remember this word. Um, yeah, so, and then also it will really much depend what kind of secondaries you could mix. Um, today we're just looking at the secondary. So if you wanted to create more colors in between, um, I would suggest so if you wanted to divide all of that, then basically half, um, what was that? I guess what you would need to do, so from here, so if you had it like that, you probably would need to then kind of measure it out to see what the length is and then put it to the half of it and then you would have exactly the same thing but like twice more so you could squeeze in more kind of mixes in there. Um, but uh, for today I want to show you um, how to mix. So yeah, it really depends what kind of colors you use. I'll just show you really quick a uh, few little examples. Um, so for instance here we have the more traditional way of color mixing which has um, you know kind of the traditional red and yellow which is a bit more on a warm side and then we have the blue but then we have the uh, modern kind of um, color wheel here which has the colors of the printer so that would be a um, in this case actually it doesn't have a cyan here so it should be a cyan but it's a lemon yellow and like a really bright pink like a magenta type of a color so you then get look at the secondaries you can get very different mixes then so basically depending on what colors you use it's um, the the mixes the secondary mixes depend on that all right, so let's see. I'm just gonna um, grab my Daniel Smith palette and just do a really quick kind of color selection here. Okay, so I think I'm going to go, let's see, for the Indian yellow. And that will be my primary yellow. So that's the yellow. And then for the red, I'm thinking, I wanna try this one, quinacridon pink. Or maybe alizarin. No, I think I'm going to go for quinacridone pink. It's sort of like a more brighter pink and I think that would give me a lovely orange together with the Indian yellow and it would give me a lovely purple. So for the red we're going to go for quinacridone pink. So for instance if you wanted to see a gradient what you could do is just load up most of the pigment at the top and then just water out the bottom bit so for instance this is your darkest part and I could try and lift maybe see if that would work so we can have a bit more of a gradient at the bottom like so And then we can do a similar thing on the yellow if it hasn't stained yet or dried up. So let's just move this up a little. 
like that. So at least a little bit of a gradient there. And then uh, for the blue, in this palette I don't have a bigger choice. I've got a Prussian blue and I've got an Indanthran blue. Um, so one is cooler, one is warmer. I think I'm going to go for the Prussian blue in this case. So it's leaning more towards warm. So that means that my purple will probably be on a warm side too. So this is how I usually would do the gradient. And then if I wanted to lift a bit, I would lift just a little bit here at the bottom. Okay, so these are our primaries. And of course I would go ahead and write down the title. And then we would um, look at the secondaries, which is the uh, mixes you get from yellow and blue, you'll get a green. And then um, blue and red, you'd get a purple. And red and yellow, you'd get an orange. Okay, so I made a little note here of the watercolors, so that I know exactly what colors I've used, because that's obviously a key. You want to know exactly what colors they were, because if you like the secondary mixes, you want to refer to it. So uh, if we're going to go now into Indian yellow and I'm going to use this part of the palette to mix, um, I'm going to go clockwise and mix an orange, so Grenacridon pink. Now if you see it's too much of one or the other, like I think I would want to add a bit more orange, into, um, sorry yellow to create an orange, otherwise it's sort of almost like a red, um, red orange. So here we go, this is more orangey. So what you could do as well, like I said, if you added more colors for this color wheel, you could then create sort of color in the middle of those two colors. So one that would lean more towards yellow, one that would lead more towards the red. So it's a lovely orange. It's got loads, loads of color in there, but it's more of a natural one. So we're getting the brightness from the quinacridon pink, but we're getting that um, kind of lovely organic look from the Indian yellow because it's not uh, a yellow like a like a lemon yellow, you know, doesn't have that acidity to it. Let's just move up a little bit more of this color. Okay, so next one, let's mix the red with the blue. Again, quinacridone pink and Prussian blue. So my wild guess is that it will be quite uh, muted purple. But let's see. So I would start by adding very little of the blue and see if I want more. So this is at the minute it's more like a violet color leaning closer to the red. Let's see if we add just a touch bit more of the blue and it's sort of now starting to turn more into a purple. So I'll go with that and maybe actually just a touch more if I wanted it really purple. There we go, that's better. Yeah, so now we're going to swatch it out. And then let's try create a gradient. So, so this paper buckles quite a bit, so um, it's difficult to create very pretty and like flat looking um, color wheels because sometimes when I use too much water, you see what happen happens, the watercolor will then go into that pocket basically. Okay, now let's look at yellow and blue. 
So there is our yellow again, Indian yellow. And I'm going to add a bit more water to this. Starting with a tiny bit of blue, we can always add more. That's a good green. Let's see if we can darken it just a touch. There we go. It's a bit more kind of in the middle. If it's too yellow, you know, you might not sort of see it. Uh, you could even add more blue to this. You want it kind of to be more in the middle of both of those rather than being too close to one or the other. But I like this green, so I'm going to go with that. Now, this is a very basic way of um, selecting, you know, this is how you start in the art school or college whenever you get introduced to color. But of course, then you can change things around. And for me, this is where it becomes more interesting. And you can, I'll show you a couple of examples. Um, so you can then start mixing colors that are not your traditional yellow and red and blue, but create some really lovely mixes and color palettes. And um, so that's pretty much it. You could then also start adding a bit of white, which I might just do really quickly. And um, I think just to speed up the process, I might actually, instead of the, um, where is my, Oh yes, I'm going to use this one here, the Ecoline White Watercolor. So this is slightly different, it's pigment, I'm um, sorry, dye based rather than pigment. But instead of going into a white, I find like a half pan or squeezing out of tube or whichever way, this is to me the easiest way. So what I do is I just squeeze out a little bit out of the pipette. I don't need to get anything kind of dirty, it's really, really quick. And then what you can do is basically, um, let's start with the orange. So you take some of the white and you add it into here until you're happy with the mixture. So that's, that's a good one for me. And then you're going to see what the pastel version of this would be. So if you'd be interested in painting pastels, you could have a good look here. Also, you can add more water or less water. It's up to you. I quite like this to be quite creamy. So that's that version. Then you do the same with the purple. And we're also going to do the same with the primary colors as well. So let's go into the purple now. Give it a good mix until you don't see any separation. That's a lovely, like a lilac. It's almost like that, um, what is it? Daniel Smith lavender or something. Gorgeous color. And then let's do the green as well. And of course, the the amount of the white you add depends on how much whiter the pastel tone will be. So it could be more pigmented or more pastel. But it would still be pastel in any case. Just more white or less white in there. Okay, so that's those three. And then um, all I have to do is just grab a little bit of the primaries so I'm going to go with the yellow just over here add a bit of water and a bit of white you can always add more if you want to that's a lovely yellow so these are kind of like ice cream colors very creamy very milky And um, I like doing that to any color wheel that I'm doing. Sometimes I'm doing mass black instead of this color. 
uh, instead of white, uh, simply because I'm kind of interested in seeing something different, like more granulation or more muted tone of the same color. But adding white is just gives you a good indication what the color would look like. Any color looks so different with white in it. Um, if I swatched a different orange or a different pink, um, the pastel version of it would be different. Like it, it really does come through. That tiny bit of a tonal change still becomes um, visible. And um, I really like pastel peaches. So that's when you'd add a bit more pink to it, um, to the orange, and then you end up with a peach, which is just so pretty. So here we're going to mix now the quinacridone pink. So this is a very much like a bubblegum pink now, and if I added more white to it, it would become lighter. But I think it's a nice color. Okay, finally, Prussian blue. So there's the Prussian blue. All right, so that's pretty much it. You know, like I said, you can create any version of the colors. This is like the most sort of um, classic way of, or traditional way of seeing um looking at color color wheel so i hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching see you soon